Accuracy. Cowboys alongside me then. Tyler Steyer to get us underway. What sort of chance has he got of pulling off an upset here, Cole? A slim one? No, I'm just joking. As slim as he yeah. is. I think at the start of the match, he's going to be key for Tyler Steyer. Very good player, good cueist. Works very hard at his game. Does everything that you should do. Doesn't do things that you shouldn't do, like go out and party and be a naughty boy. Does everything right. Ticks all the boxes. But SVB, well, he's in a different category. I think you're absolutely right. Getting a good start to the match, important for him. So he'll be disappointed that he's wasted winning the lag by coming up with a dry break straight off the bat. the eighth dry break there's been on table one today and this is the whole purpose of the the players voting this break will change in and obviously the promoters matching pool taking it on board because what we're seeing now is we're seeing we're just not seeing break and runs that becomes a bit boring we like a break and run don't get me wrong but we want to see this we want to see the push so Shane played the push because you're allowed after the break. The very next shot after the break, you can play a push. Tyler doesn't fancy it. What Shane got in mind? Is he going to outsmart him? And the push is a, it's a wonderful thing in the game of pool. could see the plan of attack from Shane but just the one ball kissing this six ball watch it comes around two rails if it misses the six he's got the hook a little flick means that Tyler Steyer, Tyler Steyer has got an opportunity it to slow down and he's left the window SVB can cut this one in the bottom left not easy but it's a chance 12 players through from the winners qualification round already we may have a few more winners in the coming minutes Max Lechner and Eklund Kachi both on the hill in their matches Played that smart. If you're wondering why he didn't play it softer to land on the two in the top left, that's probably because he prefers to hit that shot with a little bit more authority. So if he was to roll that a little softer, in his mind, he's probably thinking, I'm going to miss the ball. So that's why he sacrificed guaranteed position to stay at the table. And 16 was the last time he won it. Equally in Earl Strickland's record of five US Open titles. He's had three attempts since then to break the record. Has it really been that close? Look out at the last 16 stage last year against Lucius Yap, who went on to the final. Good bank shot, a little unlucky to hook himself on this red three. Here's another look.
is a lot to think about here. Doesn't look like there's any kind of rail to kick. I think he can just see the top side of the three. I wonder if he can get the cue ball in behind the seven. He'd have to travel the three back across. He's under it, this. So he could see more of that three than I thought. So Tyler's back at the table. And straight away, Michael, because of this break, we're seeing a, a few visits here in the opening rack as well. All helps to create a bit of tension. Tyler Steyer, born New Year's Day, 1995, so 27 years of age, from Wisconsin. Tyler's turn for a bank, but he misses it, so it's 1-0 to SVB in bank shots. That's an attacking strategy there. He had a good safety opportunity there. Could have got the cue ball in behind the six and the three near the eight. So he's decided to attack the table early on in this match. So one nil and bank shots, as you say. And very good chance now for Van Boning to make it the same. And the one stat that really counts. As I said, although it's six years, almost to the day, since he won that record equaling 50 US Open, he's only had three attempts to break the record since then because of partly a date change and partly because we lost a year due to COVID. Last 16 last year against Yap, as I was saying. The year before that was the COVID year. So prior to that, 2019 in Las Vegas, also beaten in the last 16 by... Wu Cha Ching, who, like Yap, went on to the final. It was a different format the previous staging before that, the last year in Virginia, 2017. But it was effectively the same outcome then. It was a ninth place finish, which is also what a last 16 placing is. And he lost then to a young Joshua Filler. So, in three attempts to get that tie breaking, new record setting, sixth US Open title. He's not really been as close as you might have expected him to be on at least one of those occasions. And this his last chance to get that elusive half dozen before he turns 40. Along with Joshua Filler and Jason Shaw, Shane comes under that bracket of phenomenal front runners as soon as they start clocking these racks up they can easily just blow you off the table in no time yeah and they're both extremely dangerous coming from behind as well so Tyler Steyer will be frustrated with that had the dry break had an opportunity to put some early pressure on Van Boning after that but didn't take it left the chance and Shane Van Boning leads Tyler Steyer 1-0 so I was telling you about a couple of Big names on the hill, Eklund Kachi leading Duong Kwok Huang, 8-7. Max Lechner of Austria, 8-6 up against Daniel Guttenberger. A close finish between Met Vergara and Abdullah Al Yusuf. That one is 7-all. Alex Pagalayan, 6-5 up on Ralph Suke in the clash of the old troopers. Alvin Ocean hasn't won this title before. Won most of the other big events in recent years. He's got a 2-0 lead over Si Chia Chen. And Lucius Yap, runner-up last year, 4-1 in front of Mickey Krause. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, who's having the year of his life, is a 3-0 lead over Yanni Uski. Thomas Kaplan, 5-1 up on Chris Reinhold. Back to table one. SVB has struggled a little bit with the break since we changed it, which is unusual to say. Was the cue ball. Now he hit them very hard. Did he make the wing ball on the break? It's hard to see. Here's another look. Was it the eight ball straight in? 
It was. That break is actually on. You think the wing ball in the corner is not really on, but you have to really spin the cue ball. And when attempting that, it's easy to miss cue because you've got to juice it up that much. So he's playing safe here. Just roll the cue ball off the rail. Object ball must hit the rail. So in this case, the one ball did. Containing safety. Steyer was a 9-2 winner over Dino Nair of South Africa in the first round and then beat his fellow American, Lucas Fracasso Werner, 9-5 in his next match. Zamboni had that extraordinary contest to start things off against Joey Tate. Tate, as I'm sure you've heard by now, inadvertently potted the wrong ball. Potting the five instead of the four at a crucial stage. Bamboni went on to win that 9-7. And then, as I was saying, beat Steyer's wife, Margaret Fefalova, who played really well against him. 9-5. And there she is. Her involvement has now ended. She bid, did beat Dalibor Nicolin on the one last side. And... That was yesterday evening. This morning, it was beaten in a hill-hill finish by Mustafa Alnar of Turkey. So her involvement in the US Open, over for this year. At least in a plain sense, she'll now be one of the most interested of spectators. This is nasty. How do you hit this ball? Any foul results in ball in hand, put the cue ball wherever you want. You're allowed to do a deliberate foul as well, but in this instance, that's too tricky. You can't really tie the balls up, so it's gonna come with something good here. He's gonna go one, two, three, three rails, probably four rails. He's got to miss the red three and then go before the right middle pocket. Let's see what you got. Here we go, before the middle. Oh, Tyler Steyer with a beauty to stay in the rack. I hope Margaret looked up from her phone in time to see that one. to say it will be undoubtedly the greatest year of Shane Van Boning's career if he does win the US Open having at last landed that long overdue first world title back in April in Milton Keynes he said in advance of it it would be the greatest day of his life if he won it what an incredible 2022 it would be if he could claim the record in his national championship as well Holds his hand up because he played the bank shot. The bank shot on these new tables where everything's brand new always troubles the players a little bit. Why is that, Carl? Just because when you play at home or in your local club, you, you know, they don't change the cloth that often. It can be an expensive thing, so pool players are used to practicing on a, a worn in table so you get used to that that bounce that different angle and when everything's brand new and it's usually at these big pool tournaments it's, things just slide that little bit more you have to allow for that michael how are things going on with our uh, moscone cup predictions obviously we're we're approaching the business end of the event where players are exited so they've no chance of qualifying have you been having a little nosy proceedings oh, i don't remember making any predictions well, i don't mean predictions i mean like um, what's the qualifying picture yeah, yeah. I mean. you know what i meant 
I always know what you mean, Carl. Well, what we do know is that Shane Van Boning is going to be playing in the Moscone Cup for the 16th year in a row. Runaway leader of the American standings. So his place long since under lock and key. The other two automatic spots will both be finalised this week. Now, at the moment, Tyler Steyer is down in 10th on the American points list. You've got to be in the top three come the end of the US Open. But really, it's so tight. A good long run here, and he will definitely claim one of them. Really, any American left in the tournament still has a reasonable chance, providing they can go a long way. Oscar Dominguez and Skylar Woodward holding the other two automatic spots at the moment. So three automatic qualifiers on both teams. And then the captains both have two picks. One thing that will almost certainly happen at the Moscone, which starts at the end of next month, is that Shane Van Boning will become the first player ever to play in 100 Moscone Cup matches. He's played 96 in total across his 15 previous appearances, which is more than anyone. That's a phenomenal stat. Longevity is right there. You have to say it's a little easier over the last few years to get in that American side, but I feel like until Shane hangs up the queue, he's always going to be in it. And I'm sure he'll play a lot more. It's a good start. And that's what we were saying in commentary yesterday with Jeremy. By the time he does stop playing, the likelihood is he'll have played in about 25 Moscone Cups, maybe more. Frustrating for Tyler Steyer so far. He's not really had any opportunity to get stuck into this match. And that frustration will only have been added to by the fact that Van Boning, as he acknowledged with the raised hand, had a bit of fortune not to leave him a chance from the missed bank shot. And as you say, Carl, Van Boning, a truly great front runner. And he's out in front at the moment by two racks to nil. Eklund Kachi has never won this US Open, but he was in the final five years ago, and he's through to the single elimination stage after beating Dong Quoc Huang of Vietnam by nine racks to seven. Max Lechner still on the hill, 8-7 in front against Daniel Guttenberger, Alex Pagalai in 7-5 ahead of Ralph Suke. And Si Chia Chen has broken the duck against Alban Ocean, winning the third rack to close to 2-1. Petri Mäkinen and Tim De Ruyter. Finland versus Netherlands, that's a close one. Five all at the moment. Such a determined individual, Tyler Steyer, very intense. And I wonder, Carl, does he maybe get in his own way a bit because he wants it so much sometimes rather than just letting his talent come to the fore? I don't know, I think. He's got a bit of Niels Fein in, I know Niels is one of his favourite players growing up. Niels is very intense. I think, having watched the opening two racks, maybe shot selection could let him down a little bit. There was an instance where it looked like he had an absolute guaranteed safety in the opening rack to put Shane in trouble. He chose to play a bank, it wasn't an obvious easy bank. He missed the bank. He lost the rack, so decision making is often highly underrated. But the top boys, they always seem to make the right decision. I know Darren Appleton was that type of player, Albin Ocean. They always play the right shot if there is such a thing. I think there is.
that. Darren didn't hear you referring to him in the past tense. He's still very much involved and playing Roberto Gomez in this round. But I know what you mean. He's had his heyday. Yeah, it was more when I used to play with him in the past tense. Well, even that's not that long ago. You were World Cup partners last year. Playing the bank shot here doesn't really offer much for Shane, does it? Because the cue ball looks like it's going to run into the eight off the top rail. So how do you get on the two? Safety looks tricky as well. Is he trying to play off the left edge thin? If you over hit this, you'll leave a pot. He's trying to miss the five. Yeah, he's trying to bank it up past that five and... He's left a pot. At least the cue ball's on the rail. This is tricky for Tyler. Again, that just adds to the frustration, doesn't it? At last he's got something to go at here, and the cue ball's just run next to the rail. So nothing coming easy to him at all right now. Here's his chance to get things up and running. Biggest win of his career in an individual sense. The Kremlin Cup in Moscow back in 2019. Beat David Alcady in a Hill Hill finish to clinch that. Certainly getting a good test, a good workout here at the start of this chance. This will be three pots in a row from distance. If he makes the pot. Yeah, it was never going to go in. As soon as you seen where that three was going, it was always going to stay over the hole. And seven was his first US Open success. Only 24 at the time. Not really got much high level experience prior to that. Took him five years to win it again, but when he did, he won three in a row. Missing a year in 15, he won it again in 16. Then you could see Shane just finding the centre of the table. Nice angle. He'll spin this round three, four rails. One, two, off the third. Pros always like to use that third rail. Just means they can put a nice stroke on it. So this was really the first rack that Steyer had a chance to get properly involved in. Good pots on the one and the two.
missed the three from distance. He's been sitting down ever since. Tyler Steyer is a big baseball fan. Can't get out of first base at the moment. Shane Van Boning leads 3-0. We're talking about the US Moscone Cup race. Well, the European race also comes to an end this week. Joshua Filler already in the team. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz and Alban Ocean currently occupying the other two spots. It's going to take a big effort from someone to overtake them. They're both in action at the moment, but having contrasting fortunes, Sanchez Ruiz coasting along at 5-0 at the moment against Jan Juski. As part of the Finland team, which got to the quarterfinals of the World Cup this year. But Ocean, having led Si Cha Chen 2 0, has now been pegged back to two each. It's also level between Met Vergara and Abdullah Al Yusuf, but that one much further on. In fact, it's a hill hill finish. 8 8 there. Max Lechner also still looking for one more. 8 7 in front of Daniel Guttenberger. Tim De Reuter has now edged ahead of Petri Mackinen. And there, excellent tussle on table seven. And it's now 6-5 to the Dutchman. Just returning to the American Moscone Cup race, as I've said, Oscar Dominguez in position going into this week to take one of the automatic spots. He's leading 5-4 against Sanyam Pelovanovic. Skylar Woodward, who's in the other automatic place at the moment, is behind against Moritz Neuhausen, but it's still early stages there, just two racks to one. Good up-and-coming player, Moritz Neuhausen. We spoke about him a couple of days ago. He's faring well in this year's Open. That's a nice break, nine balls close, is it golden? Oh, how is it not? Yeah, that looked like it was going to vanish, but it didn't. Somehow, here's another look. Watch how close this nine ball. Now, it's a bit of an awkward one, but is it is the 2-9 on? Yeah, it's definitely on. It, it sort of looks like he's got to hit the right-hand side of the nine. If he hits it full, maybe it might double kiss in, but it could stay out. So he's got to be playing this on the right-hand side. I presume he's playing the two into it. If he plays the cue ball into it, he may scratch up into the top left. Yep, it's a quick one. Yep, two shots was all it took. And Shane Van Boning is disappearing out of sight here. He now leads 4-0. So not much has changed in the scores while that rack was going on. I can tell you, though, that Alex Pagalion is on the hill now, leading 8-5 against Ralph Suke. Pagalion, the champion, 17 years ago now, would you believe? So remember the players who come through this winner's qualification round. That will be the end of their involvement for the day. They'll be back tomorrow for the start of the single elimination stage. And towards the end of today, it's all going to be about deciding the 32 who come through losers qualification. Each of whom will be drawn against one of the 32 winners at random later today. Shane will get the template taken off. In practice, you'd probably just leave it on the table and shoot over it, but there's something about in a match, in a big match, where you just don't like it there. Purple five is probably going to have to be a combination onto the green six. Other than that, yeah, this is a great chance for Shane.
Been doing well in all the matchroom events this year. Semi-finals of the Premier League about six weeks before he won the World Championship at the same venue in Milton Keynes. UK Open, he was just coasting through it. It was really only Skylar Woodward who had given him any sort of close run thing at all until he got to the semis and Francisco Sanchez Ruiz beat him comfortably, 11-4. Teamed up with Skylar Woodward for the United States at the World Cup of Pool. Got to the semis, lost to Singapore. And of course he was in the final of the European Open in Fulda in August. Well, the Ocean beating him in a reversal of the world final outcome. The start of these matches, Michael, a key for the second favourite. And the second favourite in this match, Tyler Steyer, has just stepped out of his chair for the first time since he missed that three in the third rack when he had a chance to close to 2-1 down. But it's only to pick the balls out of the pockets again. That's a break and run from Shane Van Boning. And he's now leading 5-0. So, update on the other matches. And we've now got two Hill Hill finishes going on. Met Fergara and Abdullah Al Yusuf still embroiled in theirs. And it's now gone eight apiece between Max Lechner and Daniel Guttenberger. The all-Austrian clash on table 24. Alex Pagelein still looking for one more. 8-6 in front of Ralph Souquet. Janioski has broken his duck against Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, closing to 5-1. Also 5-1 for Lucius Yap in his match against Mickey Kraus. Thomas Kaplan closing in on victory. 7-3 in front of Chris Reinhold. Incidentally, the winner of this match will play the winner of that match in the last 32 if they both come through their first match in single elimination tomorrow. Can't stress about the opening rack where Tyler, I don't blame him for firing at the bank shot. But you kind of feel if they don't go in, this is what can happen. Shane can run away. And that is exactly what Shane's doing. The one matchroom event he didn't do well in this year was the World Masters. He was beaten in his first match by Loho Sum. We've been talking all year about the new nine-ball world rankings. The players have been earning points right from the start of the year. And when we get to the end of it, we'll have a full year's points, and I think that will be the first really authentic ranking list. Van Bonin at the moment, very well placed to be number one on it. Interesting shot there from Shane. Decides to come just over to the left to leave himself a shot. Cue ball's got to come twice across. This is dangerous. The eight ball's big. The eight ball is big. Yep, it was always going to be dangerous, Shane. a little look oh, it's not bad is it it's not bad at all Tyler's got work to do here well, this is the same story again isn't it every time he comes to the table there's nothing being handed to him here he's had pots 
and testers from distance. Not had the rolls at times when it might have changed things in his favour. He's played in three Moscone Cups before. And you might say that brief period of dominance, if we want to call it that, for the Americans when they won back to back after losing eight in a row, was started by him on his debut at Alexandra Palace in 2018. USA were 2-0 down. It was Steyer who got the first point on the board by beating Niels Fine. They went on to win. And won again the next year. Well, he was a mile off that. He tried to cut it in the side. And he's missed it by a long way. Tyler Steyer earlier, just when the match was about to start, and he was psyching himself up, getting himself ready. That's the really frustrating thing that he would have been so determined to come out here and show the world what he can do against the world champion. And you have to be fair to him, he's not really had the chance to display that. Hasn't helped himself at times. So possesses a lot of cue power, does Shane? He gets that cue ball dancing. He's doing the quick step at the moment because it really hasn't taken Shane Van Boning very long at all to get into this position. Two thirds of the way to victory at 6 0. Abdullah Al Yusuf is having the greatest year of his career. World Championship semi finalist back in April and through to single elimination here. He's just beaten Met Vergara nine racks to eight. Still no white smoke emerging from table 24. In that other hill hill finish between Max Lechner and Daniel Guttenberger, Alex Pagelein, former champion, 8-6 up on Ralph Suke, as we've said. That one's still going on. And Alban Ocean, who was 2-0 up, is now trailing 3-2 against Si Cha Chen. Tim de Reuter, one in front again against Petri Makinen. It's been a real tussle all the way. 7-6 there. Another close one between Oscar Dominguez and Sanyan Pelovanovic. Five apiece. Chris Reinhold has just closed to 7-5 down against Thomas Kaplan. And Darren Appleton, the man whose career you were attempting to consign to history a few minutes ago, Carl. Level at one apiece with Roberto Gomez. Victor Zielinski, that's an interesting one. 5-4 behind against Daniel Masiol, who was a quarter-finalist at the UK Open back in May. And Niels Fajan, former world champion, four-time Moscone MVP, and has taken the opener against Loho Sum, who's had a breakout year in 22. Yeah, and also matches going on there on the loser side, as you noticed. Nick Economopoulos has uh, 
just won, 8-6 against Robert Frost. Christina to catch in the last few moments has made it 6-3 against Ko Ping Han. So she just needs two more. Well, Carl, there have been a lot of matches here this week you've looked at and said, yeah, that could be a whitewash. This certainly wasn't one of them. Well, in your opinion, Michael, yeah. What, you're saying you thought Steyer might get beaten 9-0? Well, I thought it might have been 9-1, 9-2. I felt like Shane was a, you know, a big favourite. I mean, that, listen, I like Tyler Steyer. I like his game. I like what he brings to the table, but... Shane, you know, to go out there and beat Shane, we've seen the young kid, didn't we? Joey Tate, you know, he had a bit of a mental breakdown. It's, it's easy to do out there. He's definitely found some form of break, hasn't he? A powerful break as well. Lovely to see. How often do we see this? Three balls down off the break, and really when it comes to potting multiple balls with the break, I think it's between... Him and Shaw as to who's the most proficient at that. I think this year, Van Boning probably has the edge. And look at that, 50 balls potted to two. They were both testers that Steyer potted. Both in the same rack. Very skillful in all what Shane's doing to play that break and get the cue ball back and forward off that side rail back into the pack at that pace. It's not easy to do. But you know he will just have worked and worked and worked on that. And the break really was the cornerstone of his World Championship success. We'd seen signs of it at the Premier League. Times in that he was breaking on a different planet to everyone else. Landed a bit straight, hasn't he, into the top pocket. He could draw it back with left English. That's what he's playing. Watch the cue ball move here. Draw it straight back. Left English will pull it over towards the eight off the back rail. And he's missed the seven, Michael. I think we can put that down to pushing the boat out didn't need to get that close to the eight did you Shane you're six nil up there's no way he'd have played that shot if it was six six look how he tries to get the cue ball this close to the eight didn't need to do that just leave yourself any angle on the eight It'd clear up small chance for Tyler Steyer to make something happen in this match oh dear oh that is not good at all Well, not surprised at all to hear the cue banging on the floor. you got to get these if you're to have any chance at all against Shane Van Bonin, even if that chance comes at nil-nil. But when you're six-nil down, he's going to find it hard to forgive himself. The other thing to take into account, sure, Double J's out there somewhere, USA's Moscone Cup captain. I mean, if he's seen them type of shots from Tyler... I'm sure he's got his little black book out, JJ, making notes. I mean, you don't want that in your team, do you? No, that's a very good point. And Steyer's hopes of securing a place automatically. Really taking a hammer in here. He'll still be involved in the tournament. He'll still have a chance to get that Moscone Cup spot. But right now, all he wants to get is one rack. Van Boning missed the seven. Steyer stepped up to the table, missed it himself. And that was that. Shane Van Boning now leads Tyler Steyer 7-0. Says so much about him, doesn't it? That he's sitting there shaking his head even at 7-0 in front. Furious with himself for missing that 7. But no one near as angry as that young man is going to be because it was a crucial moment for him and he's let that opportunity pass. Max Lechner has won. He's beaten Daniel Gutenberger 9-8. And he's into single elimination. Lechner, a quarter finalist here in Atlantic City last year. 
Alban Ocean has just pulled one back. He had lost four in a row against the Si Cha Chen. He's now closed it to 4-3. Cue ball needs to slow up because it's tracking towards the corner, and it does. Here comes the two ball. Contact, a ball must strike the rail. Sometimes you can do that, what Shane's done, because she's so tentative on the shot. We've all done it. So as Steyer tries to get off the mark here, I can tell you the next match here on table one will involve Alexander Kazakis. And this is on the loser's side. He'll be playing either Lucius Yap or Mickey Krause. And at the moment, it looks very much like it's going to be Krause because he's 7-2 down. And next up over on table two will be Billy Thorpe against Francisco Sanchez Ruiz or Yanni Uski. And again, at the moment, it looks like being Uski because he's trailing 5-1. Oh, and actually, just as I say that, it's actually been switched. So on two, it's going to be Carlo Biado, the defending champion who's been sent to the loser's side. He'll be playing Chen Cha Hua. Yeah, I think that was the right decision. Defending champion deserves to be out on the main table, doesn't he? At the end of the day, that's the, the honour you rightfully deserve. Yeah, he was beaten by Jovan Bustamante earlier today. Off to the loser's side in his attempt to be the first player to successfully defend this title since Shane Van Boning eight years ago. that on his debut Tyler Starr delivered the first point for the United States when they were 2-0 down he actually had the first chance to clinch the cup for them and end that run of eight defeats in a row when he was beaten by Jason Shaw in Europe he used that to spark a bit of a revival winning three in a row to get back to only one behind before Van Boning clinched the cup by beating Alex Kazakis Tyler Steyer is about to get his first rack of this match on the board. Could have won the previous two, which would have made it 5-2 with the break. Well, simply had to make the most of ball in hand. And to be fair, he has. So we're not going to have the whitewash. Tyler Steyer, well, that's good to see. He said earlier on, sometimes he can get in his own way by being a bit too intense. Good to see him smiling there. and That'll help him by breaking the tension a bit. He's already broken his duck. It's 7-1. Omar Al Shaheen is through. Former World Championship runner-up has beaten Radoslav Babika 9-2. Petri Makinen on the hill now at 8-7 in front against Tim De Ruyter. Turning it round just towards the finish. Alex Pagalion though still can't get off the hill. Leading Ralph Souquet, 8 7, so still looking for that one more. Chris Reinhold making a battle of it against Thomas Kaplan. Still in there, 7 6 behind. So, Steyer set a bad tone in the opening rack with the dry break. And this is his first break since then. 
7-1 adrift. clearly see the two ball but the three ball is landed in no man's land work to do how do you get the cue ball down this bottom right side of the table to shoot the three up into the top right corner that's tricky that is very tricky play the combo can he float it in and then play the red three onto the purple five never going to get there Tyler you've played in the Moscone Cup you know how the table reacts you can't get there He's going to attack this one. This is a very, very thin shot up into the top corner. Cue ball will be moving. He's not hooked, is he? Maybe he's just weighing up if he jumps over the right side. Is there a safety shot? See, you can see full ball. Is he going rail first? Is he playing the thin snip? I think he's going to attack this ball. Yeah, he has the beautiful shot straight in the middle of the pocket. Well, that wasn't easy with everything he's gone through and all the frustration he's had in this match. Still looks more likely than not, obviously, much more likely that he'll end up on the loser's side. He went there in the UK Open after losing his opening match to Miguel Silva of Portugal. And it was only a 16-player single elimination stage at the Copper Box, so it was a long trek through the one-loss side. He had six wins, a lot of them close. Two of them went hill-hill. In fact, he almost went out in his very first match. He was nearly there. He just needed... One more win to get to losers qualifying round, but was comfortably beaten by Alexa Peixelj. That's the best he's done in an event of this nature this year. Beaten in the last 64 of the European Open. One win away from the 64-player single elimination stage of the World Championship. do well at the Turning Stone Classic, which is a prestigious event in its own right in New York in January. Final standing of seventh there. Good effort when you look back to that horror miss on the seven ball in the seventh rack. Since then, he's got himself together well to win two in a row. So Ramboni's lead, still substantial, but reduced to 7-2. Petri Mackinnon has won 
Finishing strongly to see off Tim De Ruyter of the Netherlands. 9-7. Mario He has just gone 5-4 up on Roland Garcia. And Albert Ocean is now trailing 6-3 to Si Chia Chen. Thomas Kaplan on the hill now, 8-6 up on Chris Reinhold, two-time US Moscone Cup player. And it's gone hill-hill between Ralph Suke and Alex Pagalayan. Suke still such a battler after all these years. champion himself in the US Open 20 years ago. Tyler Steyer battling at the moment, but still five racks behind. Looks like he can chop the three in the side. Depends how thin this ball is. I think he looks, he looks okay from here. He's got a better view than anyone, of course, but you may have to play this with a with a hint of right English. That way it checks up off that top rail. Anyway, in the centre of the table, or leave him a shot on the floor. He's actually potted that a little, little bit too thick, and he's hooked himself. That was a poor one anywhere in the center of the table and you're good Again, he's only got himself to blame here. I know 7 3 is still a big deficit, but it's such an opportunity to get back to that. And no way he wouldn't be thinking then, well, maybe I can still do this. Good effort. He got it going towards the corner. He's very good with a jump cue. So he'll. Be disappointed with himself there. That was a good chance to try and claw some kind of fight back, and you've got to keep Shane off the hill as well. Looks like he's drawing the rock here. Let's look at the key ball. Oh, he timed that absolute beautiful. Made that look easy. That was a big angle and he got a lot of spin into it, a lot of action. To draw this off the one rail is another look. Clearly got so many attributes. I would put that high on the list. His ability and his percentage with shots like that. The one prior to that last pot, where the pocket is at least partly blind. Just gets so many of them. Here comes the cue ball. This is perfect as well. Nice little angle, just roll this ball down the rail, and you're on the hill.
And got himself hooked on the four. And Tyler Steyer was his own undoing there. Shane Van Boning stops him making that three in a row. And he's on the hill now. 8-2. Ralph Suke won his only US Open title 20 years ago, as I was saying. It was Alex Pagalion who he beat in the final. And they're still going at us in their Hill Hill finish today. Alusius Yap is through. Last year's runner up has beaten Mickey Kraus 9 2. Chang Young Lin, who was the opponent for Shane Van Boning when he last won this title six years ago, has also made single elimination with a 9 2 win over Nicolas de Leon. Thomas Kaplan is still looking for one more. Chris Reinhold has taken him to eight all. Reinhold, one of those players looking for that really big result in a big event to kickstart things in his career. That would be a good one to pull out. Alban Ocean, let's keep an eye on him. He's 6-3 down against the Si Cha Chen. The man who took his world title off him is here on the hill. And where's this nine going? That's the way to finish it. Shane Van Boning has dominated from start to finish against Tyler Steyer. And what a way to sign off. It's the golden break. And the man who's looking to complete that elusive half dozen of US Open titles is through to the single elimination stage tomorrow. Let's have another look at how he finished it off. Coming off the side rail and going into the opposite side pocket. Shane Van Boning then beats Tyler Steyer by nine racks to two. What do you make of these figures, Carl? Well, talk about the golden break just a second ago. He nearly made one, didn't he, Michael? And that's the very same pocket, so we're seeing something similar there. Miss Potts, Tyler Steyer, five. Maybe the safety error in rack one. Well, he decided to go for the bank, so there were just a few shots here and there. We call